I never used to have soil that's like this, dark, crumbly, full of life, worms, and grows some pretty amazing plants. This actually used to be very, very sandy soil. So if you've got sandy soil, a really poor soil, and you wanna know how to make it really fertile and grow a great garden, stay tuned, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it, step by step, and the best bit, I did it for free comes to improving soil there's a couple of things that we need to do we need to feed it and we need to cover it that's that's the main two things that we need to do and feeding it is as simple as adding in some well rotted manure or some compost I produce a lot of compost here so I use compost and you don't even have to dig it in if you don't want to. You can just layer the compost on top of the bed. And what's gonna happen is the worms and stuff are gonna find that source of food and they're gonna come along and they're gonna take that compost and move it down into the soil. So you don't even need to do anything. You just need to lay down some compost and then when fall arrives and the leaves start to fall, cover the bed with leaves and the mulch over the top of it helps to protect the um, soil from getting washed away from the rain and from the snow and it's and the wind too and this is how you build perfect growing soil the only thing that I have ever done to this garden bed um, since I started the garden bed uh, a year a year and a half ago was compost and fall leaves um, I also put down grass clippings from the garden and from the the lawn because I don't treat the lawn so that also went on there and again that acted as a mulch but it also provided uh, nutrients for um, the soil and the critters that live in there so let's get to it shall we Ideal growing soil should form a ball when you squeeze it with pressure in your hand and then when you apply light pressure with your fingertips or thumbs it should fall apart. Now is a good time as any to introduce you. Hello, this is little Cassini. We got a new puppy. Isn't she cute? Mm -hmm. All right, enough with the mushy puppy, let's get dug in. So I'm using a border fork to actually loosen up the compacted soil here. Um, I'm just digging over like a fork width deep um, or a fork depth and turning it over to break up the large clods that have formed. Um, I'm digging over the whole of the bed like this just to kind of loosen everything up before I start adding the soil amendments. Although you can see Volt's here watching me and supervising. Um, I'm also using it as an opportunity to pull out any perennial weed roots that I'm seeing um, and making sure that I get those out and also have the right supervision. Let's go get some compost. I'm just pouring out the trucks full of compost into the bed space. Um, it doesn't need to be exact, although I am kind of pouring it all over. You want enough compost on the bed to be able to spread about two inches of compost all over the growing space. Okay, and now I'm working it into the top few inches. I'm not really going any deeper than six inches here. I'm just slightly forking it in. It doesn't matter that it's not completely broken down oh because uh, it's going to be sat in the ground for a few months you get a rake pull out any big twiggy bits now i've got two secret ingredients that i like to add to my beds to get the most out of them the first thing i like to add is azomite or rock dust and this helps to remineralize the soil. Let's try not to breathe it in. 
and I just put a couple of handfuls in. I don't really count, I just do it so it's got a, a light dusting on there. And the other thing that I like to add is this, this is kelp meal and this again helps to remineralize and provides trace elements to the plants which helps them to function and grow a little bit better. Again, I don't really count, I just kind of put it down so I've got a covering all over and I'm going to lightly rake it in. You don't have to dig your soil to improve it over winter and actually because I have sandy soil it's not a good idea to be digging it which you're probably wondering so why the heck have I been digging this over this is where I actually planted potatoes so I want to make sure that I can get all of the potatoes out and actually harvest them all uh, before winter gets here so that's why I've been digging this over but the best way to cover and improve your soil is to sow a cover crop and it's also known as a green manure and what they do is there are plants that you sow in fall about four to six weeks before your first um, hard frost date and they grow a little bit and it helps to bind the soil together it covers the soil and it helps to prevent erosion from the rain coming down the snow when it melts and washes away and what you do in spring is you let it grow a little bit and you cut it all down and you've got some mulch that you can spread around your plants so you can add it to your compost bin um, or what a lot of people do is they cut it down and then they gently turn it over into the soil and what happens then is all the the worms and the other um, creatures that live in the soil come and help break down all of that plant matter and it releases more nutrients into the soil because what happens over the fall and the winter is these things send the roots down and some of the cover crops like the grasses like winter rye in particular has really long roots and it helps break up uh, hard compacted soils um, and in fact some soils that are very heavily compacted where you've got like a lot of walking and stuff on them you can sow radishes because as the root swells and gets bigger it helps break apart that um, compacted soil so cover crops or green manures are really amazing where I live right now I've left it too late to get a cover crop in um, but it's not too late that I couldn't um, do the next best thing to keep my soil covered which which is plant a full garden on it. Right now for me is a perfect time to be getting some cool weather crops in. So I've got a mixture of beets in here, I've got some kale, I've got some cauliflowers, spinach, all things that really like the cooler weathers and the cooler temperature. And I can just get these straight into this ground. But it's really important, especially if you're planting a full garden, to take care of that soil and give it back some nutrients nutrients because the soil has spent all of spring and summer producing a, a huge garden here and all of these plants and these plants have been taking up those nutrients which have then you know gone to provide nutrients for you as you've eaten them so it's important to add those nutrients back in the soil this right here is a myriad of broccoli we've got kale in here this is um, a thousand weight or a thousand head kale it's an heirloom variety underneath here um, I've got lettuces these are all called devil's tongue lettuce and they're thriving in these cooler conditions even though you know we're getting frosts at the back here I've got mustards so Asian greens which are fabulous in a stir fry and they're growing really really well so remember to improve your soil you've got to feed it and you've got to cover it and by covering it you can use mulch you can use plants like a cover crop or you can sow a full garden onto it so this bed now behind me is ready for me to get my full crops in and then start building a hoop house to get hold of the free PDF that I created for you, which is just a cheat sheet of everything that we talked about here today, head down to the description below and click the link and I'll send it straight to your inbox.